me as I travel solo through India, a land of endless diversity and sensory experiences, where each destination offers its own unique adventure. Today we find ourselves in Arrowville. Let's discover what wonders this quarter of India holds for us. Good morning, and welcome to Arrowville. Wow. This is where I'm staying. I think I've shown you the room already. It's a little bit messy probably, but there you go. I think it's a couple of days later after I was filming before. Maybe one day later. Yesterday I had a day off. Just to kind of get my my grounding, I guess. Yeah, and I did a so since I've been here already, I've done one sound bar. And last night I did a vinyasa yoga. And I'm just about to go do a hatha yoga this morning. So vinyasa is kind of like flow yoga, it's supposed to be quite it's like constantly moving. Whereas Hatha is supposed to be slow. It's supposed to be easier, but it's also like longer holds, apparently. So it could be harder. Depends. But I think this one, sure, I read that it was easy, ease, ease, chill. So yeah, that's where I'm going to go. And it's just, well, so I'm staying in a place called Verity. That's this place here. And this here is where I did the sound. This building here. And then across the, somewhere. Where I did the yoga. So it's actually all on the same, I guess, compound. This is like the guest house bit, and then there's the thing that's attached. And I get like a discount for staying here, actually. This room costs 1900 They not. And usually the any of the workshops that are over there cost 350 But I get a 100 discount for being Staying at Verity, and Verity means uh, truth in French. So yeah, that's cool. And there, oh, hang on. I keep forgetting I got the, this is the name of my room, which is quite nice. Quite nice, quite nice. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go do the yoga thing. I'll ask them if I can film inside for you guys, but not, I don't think it's appropriate to film during yoga classes, so I can, Film. I can come back and see you afterwards and then I can show you like because just the architecture of the place and even just the architecture of this place is pretty amazing okay so yoga okay just got back from yoga uh, yeah very good very good it was a slow one kind of more breathing uh, chill but still got very sweaty this is soaking wet my hair was, was dripping literally dripping Whew. i guess because it's so hot they don't really have fans in there and stuff it must be about 25 26 degrees or something like this so yeah very hot very sweaty i'm gonna go have a shower um might have a little rest and then maybe we'll go explore what do you think sounds good Okay. No, it's just really nice. You know, maybe 10 people in the room, maybe more. And just, you know, just started off very chill. Uh, the teacher was, you know, just sitting cross legged. There was incense. You know, the whole thing was very slow. You know, it's only really my second, although I did some at second yoga class although I did some uh, at a festival quite a lot uh, but yeah kind of officially my second one whereas I was doing it all myself just watching YouTube actually um, but yeah so it's quite nice to kind of do it in amongst people I think yeah once you get rid of the oh no I'm sweating too much oh no I'm not bending enough once you get past the the filter, the ego in front of you, and kind of just let 
it all happen. Although, you know, he's, he, they, it still comes back, obviously. Anyway, good start to the day. Uh, shower, okay. So this is Arrowville. I think I've already done this once, but I'll do it again. Check it out, guys, check it out. And so I'm staying there in that place. Yeah, there's a few like two stories. Mine's like a shared, uh, shared bathroom outside. I think some of these have um, their own bathroom and stuff. And then here is like the compound. We'll see this is this building here that I kind of showed you before. I do want to show you inside these places, but I'm hungry. <laughs> so I've thought of a thing to at least start this off. I have a key. So, um, as part of the uh, well, as a service that they provide, they give you a free push bike, just like you know, a pedal bike. So, I'm going to take advantage of that. I have been out on it a little bit, but I need to find it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> um, yeah, they also provide uh, free water, like around everywhere, and also free laundry, which is pretty amazing. Particularly because it's in Pondicherry, it cost me like 750 just to do the laundry. Right, do we remember which one's ours? Oh, not that one. Ah, that one. Gosh. Verity. This one. Da -da -da -da. Verity 17. Can you get a little key? Where is it? The key, 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 key. And it's a strange little lock here. Just look over here, matey. There, there, there. Right. And there. Right, put that in. You turn that. Actually, sometimes you need two hands. Yes, you need two hands. Great. Oh, turn that and push that. And then that's it. But then the key. Oh, hello again. Getting confused, are you? Right. And then the key just stays there, which is a little bit annoying, but we'll deal with it. Okay, so my hope, my idea, is that we put you onto the handlebar. It's kind of what I'm hoping. I do have a little clip. I hope you're going to be all right. <laughs> I'll just check how far we're going, just so we're not like going crazy. I don't think we're going too far anyway. So we're going to go to a, try to go to a place called GP Cafe. South Indian restaurant. I tried to go there the first night I was here, but it was closed already. So it closes at like 4 p.m. A lot of these places, because it gets really dark, there's not much uh, street lights. A lot of these places kind of do close. Some are open for dinner, but they actually advertise, particularly that they're open for dinner, because I guess it's so unusual, because each guest house also offers it. I mean, you know, you can go out for dinner if you want, but you know, you've also got it internal. Here they do offer food as well. Um, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and or dinner, and each one is 250. And it's like a, it's everything, everything you want, <laughs> you know. Uh, maybe I'll show you. I'll probably have the breakfast here in the morning, so maybe I'll show you that. Uh, okay, let's let's try this. Okay, so I think I actually want you to spun around, and then I'm going to clip you. You can't see that, can you? Maybe you can. I don't know. Let's see. How's that? Ooh, a bit dodgy. It's very bumpy roads, guys. <laughs> Not convinced at all. But let's give it a go. Eh? Much rather have a um, bicycle clip. I don't have one, I'm afraid. Let's see. Let's see how we go. Just, just don't fall off, guys. Just stay there. Stay, stay on, please. How we, how we feeling? All right. That's all right now. Great. And I've also got like my, oops, somewhere. Maybe I'll go up on the road. The roads are usually actually a bit nicer than the footpath. Whoa. Unfortunately, the bicycle very noisy. If you hadn't just heard that. <laughs> um, actually, what I'm going to do? Okay. 
let's adjust my bag. Not so long. Okay, here we go. Yeah. So. <laughs> Funny, you know, people, because they toot, like it's not actually, you're in the UK or in New Zealand, people toot if people do something wrong. Here, it's just kind of like, hey, I'm coming, here I am, just in case. Don't forget about me. All right, obviously with my, the noise of my bike, nobody's going to forget about me. All right, we're already at the crossroads, guys, already at the crossroads. So this is like the start here of, that's the front of like the Verity, so my place is called Verity, like I said before. Um, and yeah, it's the start kind of of, no, we want to go forwards. Ah, that's right. So I went this way before, uh, but then had to go through the bushes. So I thought the road joined up. <laughs> and I got a bit stuck in some of the bushes, so let's not do that. Okay, we're going. Come on, guys. Okay, don't fall off now. Well done. Here's a cafe view, the sprout. Very uh, catered towards. Definitely. Oh wow, look at the little thing on me. Uh, yeah, definitely catered towards um, foreigners, you know. It's. Uh, yeah, a hundred and something for a coffee. Uh, yeah, salads and uh, another crossroads, guys. I mean, it looks all, all looks very nice. And the name's the Sprout. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, but yeah, it doesn't really interest me. I want I want some South Indian restaurant, please. It's pretty easy to get around. I mean, <laughs> if I didn't have Google Maps, I would be absolutely screwed. Uh, but like, yeah, you're like, okay, so it's kind of in this direction, so let's go down this path. I've had to do that a couple of times. And actually the first night I was here, I um, didn't have a bicycle. And I kind of went all the way, well, to this place, it was closed, so I keep, had to keep going. I found another place, it was open. But then, as you can maybe see, oh, someone's coming behind me. Uh, on a lot of the bits, there are no street lights. Luckily, I did read uh, one of the gift house's suggestions for bringing a torch. So I have a head torch with me, not right now, but obviously it's like midday. Um, <laughs> but yes, yeah, so I was walking back here, pitch black. Oh gosh. Gotta watch the uh, soft stand here. Yeah, pitch black. Having just turned up like two hours previous, so not really knowing the place. And then walking back. And it's very, I'm not sure if it's like from, it's probably from the forest. Like I've noticed around here, there's kind of like this, this mist that's around. It's like very eerie, particularly when you're by yourself. Uh, which way do we want to go, guys? That looks quite nice in here, but that's not where we want to go, I don't think. So we're here, okay. Cool. Yes, yeah, really eerie. Uh, I didn't, I, like, by the time I got here, and after all the stuff was trying to get here with fever and stuff, uh, I just needed a rest, so I didn't take you with me. I just wanted to explore a bit myself as well, you know? But yeah, it would have been good for you to see that. I am going out tonight to meet some friends. I probably won't film their interaction, but I could probably film maybe around it, you know, the way there, the way back. Maybe I could just film the food. Well, you know. if you haven't noticed, I was very highly planned on every, absolutely everything that ever happens ever. I mean, kind of. Mm. Eventually, it all works out. I just wanted to, the place is actually good, but I just wanted to come here because. That there is like a big wind prop. Looks like it's actually from a... It's like a wind farm actually. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll believe you. I thought it was like a crash. When I first saw it from far away, I thought it was like a crash plane or something. Right, so this is where we are. 
the gate's open this time. I just kind of pushed through the gate last time. So yes, walking back by myself in the dark with a head torch through the forest I've never been through. Just relying on Google and my internet had actually died. <laughs> so you know, it wasn't, wasn't ideal. Okay, there's a little people here. I kind of want to find a quiet place to go. Okay. We're here. Uh, GP. South Indian kitchen. Yeah, this is South India, I guess. Isn't it? True. <laughs> Funny. Sometimes I don't even know where I am. Um, yeah, so we're here. I've ordered. I've ordered a coffee. My brain is in need of caffeine. Um, I've also ordered, I think, three plain paratha and chicken curry. I think that's what I've ordered. I think so. This is 3NO, which I think means three. Not sure. Um, also noticed just over there, they do like the full doses. Um, like big ones. It's cool. This is the place here. I was, oh, one thing about it is uh, look, the tables here. They're uh, solar panels. I guess like already used or like disused solar panels. Or like an assume. Ah, but it's quite a nice place just under the tree. Under the tree. Got a couple of couple of friends here as well. You can see there's one crow. Another one up, up the tree there. Oh, even behind a branch, I think it's camera shy. Not like our friend over there. Okay, yeah, so I'm just sitting out here because, well, this is the place. Did I show you that? That's the place here. Da -da -da. Very nice. And the weather's great as well, so. Yeah. Wish wait for food, eh? Food is here. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, so yeah, this is like chicken curry, and then uh, well, paratha. I call it roti boom, just from from um, Malaysia. But yeah, here they call it uh, they call it paratha. Wow, it's really crispy. Not really oily either. Music's really oily. So yeah, this is what we're dealing with, guys. Wow. Very good. Kind of a bit of shredded uh, chicken. Some big bits of chicken. Obviously like a creamy, very hot sauce. <laughs> Tastes a lot of cardamom. Looks like there's tomato. Um, I think that's, what sort of bark is that? Anise, not aniseed, maybe Licorice, licorice bark, and what else we got? The camphor le leaves. What else? Mm, that's about it. No, is that a bone? Oh no. Yes, it is a bone. Okay, that's all right. It's very hot. I'm gonna maybe do this first. Wow, it's amazing how um, non-greasy these are. They're like kind of just all flaky. Usually they're just like really dripping with oil. Mmm. So good. Don't think I've had a bad meal really since I've been in India. But I do like curries. I do like spicy food. So maybe that's how some. Oh, I ordered a coffee as well. I'm not sure where that coffee is. Maybe it's still coming. This is very good. Probably a little bit smaller than probably what I'd normally have as well. Okay, I'm gonna get through this. And, oh, gosh. <coughs> yeah, I might have to stop talking for a little bit. <coughs> so something in 
something exciting just happened. See these guys up here. Yeah, that guy. Um, <coughs> see, I thought I thought they'd forgotten my coffee, so I went and tried to get my coffee, and they they swooped down and um, I don't think they quite got to the food, but it was close. I mean, I'd almost almost finished anyway. <coughs> but yes. Now the coffee's here, but I imagine it's boiling hot. Yes. But yeah, it'd be great if I had the camera on, actually. You would have seen the crows come. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Or oh, they may have attacked you. I'm not sure. Hmm. Right. Just a bit of chill. And then we're going to go to... How do you say it? I can't remember. Matamandiri, that's it, Matamandiri. So Matamandiri is like the central point in uh, Araville. <coughs> uh, I'll tell you a bit more about it once we get there, but it's this big golden dome. Uh, kind of showed you on the tuk tuk on the way in, but just over the fence. There is actually a viewing point you can go to, so we're going to go there. And then I have booked, not tomorrow, but the next day, I believe, um, to, wow, I'll just show you, it's my coffee, like, see there's like this skin on top, and it looks like it's vibrating or moving or something, and it's just as it's setting, it's kind of doing some weird things. <coughs> um, yeah, so, we'll go there, around there, and then I'll probably take you back to the guest house and show you around the, like the pavilion, kind of the more, the program's pavilion. But yeah, the, the, the um, big golden dome, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an iconic, iconic, I would say, um, Indian landmark. Although you read it, ah, that's what I was saying, I was saying you know, I, I, I booked for in two days time so you can go in and you can go into like the inner circle which is inside the gold dome and um, do like a meditation or they call it private concentration or something like that which is basically meditation without saying it's meditation yeah but you have to book like a few days in advance and it's only open between 7 a.m. and 12 p.m. and I was going to book just after I'd organized coming here um, I tried to book, but I, book, I looked on the website at 12.43 and the online booking system had already closed, um, annoyingly, and then it's not open on a Tuesday, which was yesterday, so I couldn't book yesterday, so it reopened today, and then you've got to book at least, one, well, I'm getting it two days in advance, but it says, it suggests between three and a, three days and seven days in advance. So yeah, I think I was lucky to get, get in on that one. Yeah, that 12 o'clock, I knew about the booking three days in advance. I didn't know it was closed on a Tuesday and I didn't know it's only open between seven and 12. But I worked it out. <clears throat> but it just means I'm, I'm staying here in Arrowville because I was supposed to be leaving tomorrow. I thought I'd be seeing the Madame Mandiri today, like now. But yeah, that didn't work out. So, so we have to stay a couple more days. That's not a bad thing. But my guest house is booked out, so I have to move to another one tomorrow for two nights. It's a bit annoying, but it's it's actually closer to Madame Mandiri. It's like central or central guest house or something like that. So, yeah, that may be better. I'm not sure. We shall see. And I guess I'm pretty sure they won't let me uh, film in there, but I think it's like a morning meditation. I'll tell you more about it later, I guess. And you know, we're going to go over there in a second after I finish this coffee, get back on your on your bike, and get on over there. It's a big gold dome. All right, and we'll have a look around there. Nice one. Let's go. Well, coffee, and then go. Oh, gosh, everything's attacking my food today, look. <coughs> oh, well. It's just finished up there. Da -da -da -da. 
Um, food, great. Coffee, eh, coffee. That was good, actually. Not a flat white, but still, a coffee. And uh, didn't get attacked by crows, which is great also. Now, we're gonna go to Madame Ndiri. Oh, or at least to the viewpoint, I think. Just gonna put you on there. <laughs> Technically, um, you're supposed to go to the visitor's center to get like a visitor's pass. It's free, <clears throat> but it's just to go to the, to the viewpoint. That's not even inside. Uh, although, you, yeah, although I, I, I think you can just go straight there. Anyway, let's, let's try something, hey? Okay? Here we go, back on the bike, back on the bike. Hold on guys, hold on. Hold on please. Oh, hang on, I might actually put you around. All right. And then you can go that way. <coughs> okay. Well done. Here we go. What's that? No. Oh. Brakes, guys. The brakes. That's strange. I have been able to take the key out before. Okay. I'm not sure how to do it before. There we go. Oh, yeah. When you lock it, the key comes out with you. Forgot, forgot, forgot. Let's go. I think I parked in the wrong place, but quick, before I know this. Here we go. Make sure you're cool. Ah, oh, here we go. Can you just keep holding on to this, please? I should probably do it, put like a, something around you so you don't fall off, but every GoPro's thing will just hold you on, yeah? Where are we? Okay. Gotcha. Now, straight away, we don't know where we're going. We're gonna go that way. Sure. Hold on. Here we go. Okay, so yeah, we're going to Makamandiri. There is a road called the Makamandiri Road. Strange enough, goes around Makamandiri. And when we're coming this way. So. Now this here, this is Arrow Mode. Did you see it? There is a few things that go on there. Um, so like I said, like, in previous maybe things, each place there's like you know little communities, you know, that's kind of set up all over Araville. I think, for example, in terms of just the guest houses, there's something like 92, 92 guest houses. And we see each one of those kind of more or less relates to, I guess, a community. Now also, Arrowville, also known as the City of the Dawn, has about 50,000 residents. Now I don't know if that means permanent residents or that includes tourists, I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, it's, it is a small city, but it's very, like for India, uh, by India's sort of you know, metrics or standards, it's quite a small, small little city, which is nice. You know, because people can just, you know, I mean, it's very, very specific type of person that would want to come here as well, I, I think. You know, some sort of super hippie, that's not really for the, like, for the ultra tourist people. I don't think. All right, we're coming to a crossroads. I've done this one before. I've been here before, don't worry. It does look like that. So you see here, you see this? Yeah, I was walking down this road, actually, the other day, in the dark, being like, well, there's loads of street lights, why aren't they turned on? But it looks like they're just building this road. Now what that will do to anything, if anything, I don't know, but like it looks pretty special, this road. So I imagine they're gearing up for something. Oh, look, this is that lady that had the... Hey, yeah. 
had the uh, funny umbrella on top of the bike. Sounded like an electric one as well. I've noticed there's been like a few electric, there's electric tuk-tuk driving around, a lot of families, a lot of kids, kids that kind of seem very comfortable being here, so maybe they live here, I'm not sure. They're a very interesting place to grow up. I think they do have a school. Uh, yeah. And there is, yeah, yeah, there you go, did you see that? School bus stop. So there is like a bus, there's school buses I've seen. I think they go all the way to Pondicherry and back out or in, or whichever way. Uh, in the town hall. Let's see there's a town hall. <laughs> Gosh, there is a, a bigger digger, a big digger coming right towards me. Nice, we can one for later. And the car, right behind me! Yay! Got it! There's not really traffic here. Right, I can see the dome through the trees. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to. Let's try. Now, whoa. So you're kind of looking at the ground there a bit, aren't you? Okay, let's go. Mitra. Inspiration, you know, there's places like that place called Inspiration. There's another gift house I was looking at called Goodness. The place I'm staying at is Verity, which is obviously, uh, well, as I said before, it means truth in French. Uh, I've seen another one called like Sur Centration. I can't remember. You know, there's all these really interesting names, you know, very conscious kind of names and reminders. And you know, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be India without a cow, would it? Cow on the road, a couple of cows on the road, three cows on the road, or some strange tractory thing. There's a cow, there's some dust. See, so I wasn't sure if perhaps the stuff that I saw in the middle of the night, you know, while I was walking in the middle, ooh, kapu, kapu, kapu. Uh, okay, I, I pretty much missed that one. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure, because you can kind of see this dust, right? And I wasn't sure if this dust is the road, or if it's from the trees, or it's like mistiness, it's good, or it's bad, or it's nice, as he... Okay, so this is kind of like the main road, <laughs> or at least it feels like it sometimes. So this here, the thing to the left of me, yes, this to, to the left of us, uh, that surrounds the, the Golden Dome, Mount Madiri. Gosh, I'm going to get off this way too bumpy. Gosh. Obviously, cars have been going up and down it a lot. Yes, around the uh, so you can't, you can't actually get in as such. Kind of weird, I think. It's kind of very closed off like that. But I think if they didn't do that, it'd be just so out of control. Like even the fact that they have the, the viewing platform up here. Oh, you can see it from here, but maybe I'll just, I'll give it to you when, when we can see the full thing. But like the viewing platform, yeah, I guess they, again, they have to have that or else there'd just be people like all over it, climbing on it and stuff. You know, and it is a sacred place. Actually, when you're booking to go into the inner chamber for private concentration, <laughs> um, they do say this is not a tourist site. This is a, a place, a sacred place or something like this. Maybe not sacred. Yeah, they try and keep away from like any sort of dogmatic anything. Here? I'm not sure. Okay, so yesterday this guy, he just let me go through without a ticket. There's this guy here on the right and he can kind of point you wherever you want to go. Ah oh, there, certitude, certitude. And then there's this guy here who takes the ticket. 
So he takes the tickets around here. Hello. Yeah. Do I need a ticket? Yeah. Should I go get one? Yeah. I need to go. Oh. Okay. It's okay. You can pass there, go to there. Yeah, it's okay? Okay, okay. <laughs> Nobody's getting tickets. Everybody's cheating them. Right, just gonna park this bike, guys. So we can't, which is a good thing, you can't really drive all the way up, which is fair enough. Let's see. Okay. Special technique, it clicks, it's happening. Right. I'm just gonna turn you off, guys. All right, and I'm gonna change your uh, memory card. All right, guys. Yeah, like I said, technically you're supposed to go down that road there, get a ticket, and it's that man near. But I kind of came by yesterday and he uh, just let me through, so I was hoping because another like kilometer or something in the other direction. It's strange I don't have it here, but I guess it yeah, spreads people out, doesn't make them so busy. You can see just here, all this here is oh, you can actually see the gold thingy just behind the trees though. They do kind of hide it quite a lot behind the trees, which is interesting. I guess they do that on purpose, so you have to go to the viewpoint. I'll show you why I maybe think that in a second. Um, but yeah, you can see here all these uh, solar panels. Amazing. And there's some sort of strange... Oh, that's just like a turny roundy bit. So there's, there's a thing here. I mean, there's a thing everywhere. But as you can see here, there's this bayon tree. I never know if I'm saying it correctly, but um, Bayan, you know, it's quite a holy or quite a significant tree in India. Uh, it was, I think, one of the trees that got enlightened. Well, they, they also call it something else, I think. Or I may be wrong. No, I think I'm right. Anyway, what's so interesting about these trees is that they have vertical roots. Well, they have. They obviously have the main trunk, right? The main trunk, let's see. Main trunk here, yes. And then it goes, and then back down into the ground. And up and up and up and up, 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 massive it's just massive i have heard that they actually purposely keep it at i think 40 50 square meters something like that so you know but that's still quite big and as you can see maybe here um there's a few ladies that are raking it's like three four rakers wow all the ground here is all like you can see it going it's great and then you know you can see these big trunks here I believe this is, uh, I think they guesstimate it, or I read somewhere that it's um, uh, like a hundred years old. Very big for just a hundred years old. I mean, the main trunk obviously is that, right? And then, you know, but then you've got like a whole tree there, which is actually just its roots. And then I think they kind of join underneath, I think. Now. What's interesting about the tree is that this was originally the center of Arrowville. So this was the central point. I guess this is where they started. I've read somewhere, and actually I'll read it to you again because it's up here, I think. Um, read somewhere that, yeah, the mother, so you know, there's Sri Aurobindo, or Bindu, Bindu. Um, and the mother, they're the two that kind of created this. And it was Mother who decided that this tree would be kind of the central part of Arrowville. And then everything else was kind of built around it to start with, or at least created to start with. Apparently, this is like all industrial land. Yeah, all industrial land. And the only thing that was on that barren landscape was this bayon tree. So here we are, look. Matamindiri. Towards the viewing point. 
There's Le Panorama. Oh gosh, a lot of people coming all of a sudden. I guess there's like schools. Oh, kids, kids are everywhere. Oh, so it's not quite as peaceful as it was the other day. Uh, but it's still cool. And you know, kids are, they have peace within them, even if they don't know it. Hello. Uh, then where these kids have come from? Like what city I mean? Oh, I guess it is hot. I need to try and get myself a hat as soon as possible. These are the grounds. So you can see here like, oh, I just got wet from something. Now, you see here there's all these uh, like succulents. I think those are like aloe, aloe vera. I'm not sure what these are. Looks very uh, fertile, you know, but it's very manicured and created. You know, it's, it's kind of a strange thing because, I mean, like I said, from what I've read, it was originally a barren landscape. You know, so everything you see that's planted, apart from the bayon tree, and like all the structures, everything, it's kind of just it's all worked out somehow. As you can see here, there's like this uh, buffering here with the uh, mandala. I saw uh, a woman doing it the other day. Here's some lily, lily pads. Quite nice. But are you ready? Are you ready? Wow, a lot more people than before. My brain is starting to fry. Let's see. Ready? Here we go. I'm going to zoom in a bit. There you go. There he is, there's man watering all the plants. As you can see just here, and over here, there's like some diggers. So that's the golden thing. And then there's like this kind of waterway here. And I'll show you. Let's zoom you back out. You can see my face like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll go read you. I'll go read you a little story. It is hot, guys. See, so yeah, there's a whole long story here. So right now what they're building is the lake. But we'll come back to that, guys. That's towards the end. Right. Pretty. The amphitheater, which you can kind of see over there. Actually, maybe what I'm going to do is turn you around. I'll zoom you in. Right. There's the amphitheater there. That's about as close as I can get you, I'm afraid. Um, so, ready? At the time of Arrowville's inauguration ceremony on February 28, 1968, a white urn in the shape of a lotus bud had been placed on the top of a small mount. The construction of the amphitheater started in 1972, but it was only in the 90s that it was finally clad with red stone. The Arrowville Charter, ah oh yes, that is quite interesting actually. The Arrowville, Arrowville Charter, handwritten by mother along with a hand, with handfuls of soil from all over the world is sealed inside the urn. So inside, mm, you might be able to see it. Uh, there. Yeah, there's like earth from all around the world, you know, because this is supposed to be like an international city, you know, a city for everybody. So then we've got obviously the Bayan tree, which I showed you just before. Uh, yes, the Bayan tree I will tell you about by late 1965. Time had come to define the center of Araville in front of a map of the area north of Pondicherry. The mother consecrated. Hang on, these kids are just in the way a little bit. That's okay. Uh, consecrated and pointed to a particular area. The architect, Roger Anger, found there was a solitary bayon tree 
a tree regarded as sacred in India. See, I've told you all this. And a totally barren plateau overlooking the Bay of Bengal. The mother decided to make it Araville's geographic center. This bayon tree is probably a little more than a hundred years old. Banyans have the peculiarity of producing aerial roots which grow down from branches towards the ground and take root to become new trunks. The diameter of this banyan tree is kept at approximately 50 meters. See, so I've told you all this. The mother gave to Matamindri 12 gardens. These names are existence, consciousness, bliss, light, life, power, wealth, utility, progress, youth, harmony and perfection. The order of the sequence is important because in Sanskrit the first three names are Sat, Chit, Anand, which is the essence of the divine. Perfection being the ultimate aim of evolution comes last in the list. Towards the end of 1971 the mother selected the central flower for each garden she selected the hibiscus, each of the gardens, except for wealth, which was water lilies and cacti for perfection. Oh, water lilies and cacti, and for perfection, preliminaries and psychological perfection. I don't know what that one means. Uh, Matamindiri. So, at the center of her town, the mother said that there would be a park of unity and a pavilion she named Matamindiri, translated to the Mother's Shrine. On the 21st of February, 1971, let's just turn you around a little bit. Uh, 1971, Matamindiri's foundation stone was laid on November 17th, 1973, at the 19th hour 25 at 7.25, the concreting of the four pillars which support Matamindiri ended exactly at the time the mother left her body. The architect Roger Anger gave the shape of a lotus blossom in a full bloom to Matamindiri. You can see maybe there like it kind of goes up and there's the, the thing in the middle and then like this, right? To Matamindiri with its 12 large petals symbolizing the divine consciousness. The chamber floor, walls and roof were completed in 1979. Wow, it's getting very dusty over there. This flattened sphere is covered with some 1400 golden discs to, symbolizing, to symbolize a radiating golden supermental sun. Wow, supermental. Okay, now we get to why is there all these diggers making loads of dust. The man, the Matri Mandir gardens will be surrounded by the lake. The mother explained that this lake will act as an isolating zone around Matamandir. A zone of silence, as you can tell. That zone of silence doesn't happen around here, but <laughs> That's the whole point, right? A zone of silence that will help create the calm and focused atmosphere that she wishes to see in the Matamindir and its gardens. The large excavation in front of you is the first section of this future lake, reaching 10 meters deep in its center. This body of water will be alive, integrating or irrigating, integrating, yeah, ir integrating plants and fish to maintain its biological balance. Surrounding the whole of the garden, there is also an open channel, 7.5 meters wide. I can't see that. That looks too big to be 7.5. Ah, no, that's it there. See, you can't see it over there. Right. And one kilometer long, this channel collects all runoff rainwater from the gardens, the amphitheater, and Matria Manbir structure to supply the lake. 
a lake will act as a rain reservoir. Um, that's a lot of talking. Maybe we don't need all that edited in. I don't know. If you're interested, maybe there's an extra long version. I don't know. Right now, I'm going to get out of the sun, away from the kids, and stop the sweating. But yeah, here he is. Here we are. Here we are. What do you think? Pretty cool, no? Pretty cool. And yeah, I booked uh, not tomorrow, but the next morning, I believe, to be in there. So yeah, we'll, we'll go have a look inside. I'm not sure if I'll be able to take you in. Like I said, maybe before, it does seem like places like this being sacred, they don't really want people in filming and stuff. And that's not really what it's about. No, it's not about going and taking a photo with it. <laughs> a lot of people seem to be doing that. You know, this is the tourist bit, right? The bit inside is like for the serious super hippies like me. <laughs> uh, not really, but yeah. I'm going to sit down here for a bit because I'm melting. Uh, and yes, this has been a long, very long talky talk. So let's just turn you around, zoom you in, and there you can see. All the kids have gone, gosh, that was too much noise all at once. But yeah, they were only here temporarily, which is great. But yeah, now we've got the diggers, but all good. As you can see, yeah, like I was saying, so this here is like the, like I was telling you before, like, oh, you know, there seems to be all trees over that side and all that side. But it looks like they literally have structured it so that all the trees are all over there. So then this bit here is the viewing point. That's pretty cool. But then the rest of it you can't see. You have to come to this bit to see it from. It's good. I think that's a good idea. Although it does create a lot of kids in one place, which ooh, is a lot. But it'd be really great to get into the uh, amphitheater there. And even just see things happen there, or I don't know, experience the thing. I don't know what really happens here. I imagine they do like maybe various festivals and stuff. There are like permanent residents obviously here. There are like semi-permanent residents, you know, people that kind of stay on. There's people that own land, I guess, here. I'm not sure how land ownership works, but um, it's quite a thing, you know. I mean, one thing that, you know, people do wonder or say, or whatever, is, is it a cult? I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't say that I, it's, it's not one that is trying to indoctrinate me. You know, maybe, uh, how do you define a cult? I don't know, a group of people, like, you know, coming together for like a single cause. Mm, maybe, I don't know. But you know, it does seem to be, it seems to be more than that. It seems to be more than that. And it seems to be working, I think. But yeah, I, I assume they have kind of their own festivals and holidays, and, you know, celebrations and all this, as well as maybe some of the Hindu and various other cultures as well. Uh, I don't really know, actually. Maybe I'll look that up. Maybe you could tell me in the things below, what do you think of Ar Araville in general? If you're like a Indian national, if you're from Pondicherry, if you're from anywhere around here, or even just further afield in India, what do you think? of Araville itself. So you think it's a bit of a strange thing? There's a lot of foreigners here. <laughs> you know, and it does seem to be, I mean, it's, it is about that, right? So the idea is that it's supposed to be this international kind of city for everyone with no borders. Obviously you have to have a Indian visa to be able to stay here. It's not its own, uh, you know, thing in itself. It's not its own um, country, let's say. But, um, yeah, really interesting to find out what people think about it. Hmm, interesting. What do you think? Cool, guys. Well, I think that's enough for me. It's pretty hot. I'm, what am I going to do? It's now 10 to 3. Might go back to the guest house and I'll show you around there for a bit. And then I'm meeting up some, with some friends later. So, yeah, let's do that. Come on, let's go, let's go. Back on the back, back on the back.
ग्राउंड नो असे ये इज ऑन द ग्राउंड यो ओके ओके ब्रो यो गाइस सो आई जस्ट आई मीट अप विद दीस गाइस यस 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 आई एम जस्ट आई जस्ट विजिटिंग हियर इन आरविल व्हाट डू यू थिंक अबाउट आरविल आरविल या गोल्डन the uh, metal in there what do you think what do you think uh, that's very beautiful very beautiful uh, yeah have you been inside yet oh uh, yes you have inside inside ah okay 120 people countries are funding for this place yeah and uh, it's good central government is also funding too much fund in this place yeah. and uh, 5 5100 acre uh, on wow. land this very big this land yeah 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 Thank okay, you. cool. Cheers, guys. Nice to meet you. Thank yeah, you. nice to meet you. Cool. Enjoy, enjoy. Nice to meet you. Oh, <laughs> enjoy, enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> See you. <laughs> okay, we got a hug. Fair enough. <laughs> oh, but yeah, interesting. You know, they normal five peoples. Uh, they just on holiday here. They're coming to check it out. Doesn't really find it quite hard to ask. The exact question that I just asked: What do you think of it? Not what is it, but what do you think of it? Yeah, you know, maybe it's a maybe it's a hard one to answer. And that's good. It is good. But um, yeah, I would like to know what people actually think about it. <sighs> but also, it takes takes a bit to ask questions. So yeah, I think I've just about had enough for the day for this vlog, probably. Yes. <laughs> okay. Cool. Maybe we'll uh, go back on the bike, and I think I'll start a different vlog. Maybe around my place. So I'll just give you a little tour of my place. As long as they're not doing, I think they might be doing yoga. Uh, they're doing yoga at three o'clock, so I can't really do it then. I might be able to film the other bit. Anyway, gonna get out of the sun. Um, like I said, technically you're supposed to go to the visitor center, which is down there. But I have just read, actually, that um, to go into Madame Deary, you have to like confirm your pass anyway. So I have to go there in a couple of days anyway. So we'll go there another time. Anyway, that's enough, guys. Uh, here's one of the buses. See that bus? I think goes all the way in to Pondicherry. It's hot. Nice one, guys. Check it out. We're going. We're going. Hang on. Hang on. Actually, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just end this video here. Actually, oh, sometimes I do wonder. Um, yeah. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching and all that stuff. Why don't you subscribe? Subscribe. More India. More. More. Just more. More stuff. Yeah, still here, and I'm, I'm thinking about extending my time here. We'll see how that goes. I'm not sure. Uh, cool. Cheers, guys. Well, until then, until the next one. Keep on drifting. <laughs>